Daily Gun Show. We come to you live each night at midnight Eastern to talk about guns for about an hour. So uh, we got some people joining us tonight. Uh, we got Elvis joining us from South Carolina. Thanks for jumping in. Hey man, thanks for having me. It's nice to be here. We've got uh, Gun Snob joining us from Oklahoma. Thanks for joining. Yep, thanks for the invite, sir. We've got uh, Patriot jumping in from Michigan. It's not even cold yet, but thank you. And then I'm trying to zoom in here, see if this will work. It's working. The Google's weird with zooming. I won't be able to zoom. But we got this guy. And he gets to explain what this is all about. It's a pancake fart in our chat. So what's this pancake fart all about? No, that's that's me driving home real fast. Uh -huh. So I can come so I can get be on the show. All right, so we got open face hot dog sandwich joining in from uh, Pennsylvania. Thanks for joining. Yep. No problem. Even though you put a pancake bar in our chat. Nope, that's me going fast. Zoom, zoom. All right, so uh, <laughs> today's Tuesday. We talk about the Second Amendment on Tuesday, and today we're going to talk about um, why are antis so afraid of guns. We've uh, got the show scheduled out here for probably the end of middle of november end of november almost so i've got a bunch of topics in here we re we are recycling a bunch of them uh so we've talked about some of these things before but uh probably years ago at this point so uh anybody has topics for the show going forward feel free to email to the daily gun show at gmail.com but uh we'll probably touch on some things that we've touched on you know another 600 whatever shows we've done uh it's one of the things that happens when you have uh you know, daily show, you have to you, you, you get a lot of topics to cover. So, like I say, some of these might be recycled or might be obviously recycled, but uh, hopefully we'll do them justice talking about them again. So, uh, why are the antis so afraid of guns? Not afraid because of they, guns. It's probably because they watch movies. I don't think they are afraid of guns. I think they're afraid of gun owners. I, I don't think it's that. I think that they are afraid of themselves with a gun. I don't think they trust themselves with a firearm. So therefore, they don't figure that they should trust anybody else with one either. Well, sounds like we went right from superficial to the gist of it. I mean, I personally agree with Outlaw and Snob, but I want to keep tainting it. Yeah, I still think they learn most of their understanding of firearms from the movies. And if you didn't know anything about them, and you well, know, that's, they, the, that's the qualifier, right? Is they have to only get it from movies and have no other experience in it. Yeah, it's, I mean, where else do that that type of person get their information from? I mean, news, I guess, but I mean, I don't see them searching out books or searching out, you know, actual real information. You know, if they go through movies that, that play them a certain way or, you know, news that pushes a certain thing, and then they've never had anybody in the family or, you know, personal experience with them, I don't, I don't see them learning anything but that. <clears throat> yeah, I think there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of people out there, just like Patriot said, that, that have never been around them, does, don't have any friends or family members that own guns. And whatever misconceptions they might have, there's nobody there to set them straight or to make them understand that just because you own guns doesn't mean you're some sort of, you know, warmonger, somebody that owns guns because they're implements of destruction, you know? Well, I have something to add to that because if you don't know anything and you've learned it from 
bad sources, you know, movies or TV or whatever. And say you have somebody that, that you know, somebody close has been done wrong by a criminal or something, you know, that could throw a whole nother skew into it. Now, if you have, you know, somebody you know was, was mugged and, you know, something violent happened, you know, that could add to it, maybe. Yeah, and, uh, <clears throat> sorry, one other thing about it is, is uh, just the fact of uh, maybe they either don't have anyone to teach them anything about it, or maybe they just absolutely don't want to learn, you know, anything about guns. Well, you have to. You're talking about the media and you're talking about the news. <clears throat> you don't ever, it's just like we're always saying, you don't really hear about people that do good stuff with guns, right? So if you're on the fence or quote unquote, or, you know, you, you don't have much of an opinion and all you see is gun used for bad, gun used for bad, gun used for bad day after day after day. Um, yeah, it's going to, it's going to push you to that side for sure. I mean, okay. you can't really blame somebody for for having their their you know for, for having their views pushed that way when that's all they're flooded with you know and not not every once in a while at least seeing wow a mom protected her kid or, or something you know yeah you, know, and, you drop them down the steps you know they take out everybody it, it's well see here's the thing even the so-called right media you know your fox news they don't post those stories about good people with guns either. And that was, those are the people you would expect, uh, you know, the, the uh, conservative news stations. You, those are the ones you'd expect to actually push those kind of issues. But they're maybe not. Maybe if they either. weren't. Maybe if they weren't based in New York. Maybe. Yeah. Well, one is thing I part of it is because I don't know if even if they are gun friendly. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they can be on one side a little bit, but that doesn't mean anything, at least as far as I know. The only time I ever see anything positive gun is just local news. You know, a local might carry the story one news segment, you know, on one broadcast, you know, of how somebody did something good with a gun. But after that, it's gone. And even if the national news does carry it, they do the same thing. It's never a 24 hour news cycle of good guy with a gun. Now, the other way around, it's 24, 48 hour news cycle. But it's because it's over. I mean, what 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 else has they got to say if if somebody ended something bad, you know, with a firearm? There's nothing left after that. The, you know, bad guys right. either done or in jail. And what what kind of story is that? Not yeah, we had on that. <clears throat> we had it happen uh, in Harrisburg uh, a couple of years back. Somebody tried to mug um, two guys walking in suits. You know, and um, they were actually, I can't remember if they were reps or senators, but they were, you know, in, in, in coming from the Capitol. And one guy pulled out a, a, a pistol and he shot, I think two shots. I don't know if he hit the guy or not, but um, the guy, they had, I think he had pulled a knife on them and he was carrying, and that was just like, you know, they talked, people talked about it for a day or something and that was it, you know, um, that was a, big deal to me i was talking about that like crazy i was like oh isn't that great isn't that great you know somebody could you know that they were able to de defend themselves you know but it just kind of went came and went you know kind of a bummer that's why we're here yeah yeah absolutely i mean that we're in, in the show but just you know that's that's why we're talking about it i'm mm -hmm. sure that yeah and it's it's good i mean you know i'm a <clears throat> good example of um, somebody that uh, was not very vocal about it until I really got online and, you know, started watching YouTube stuff and then joined gun channels uh, much more vocal now than I was. Um, and I think it's, it's good. I mean, I think we all um, can be really good poster childs for poster children, I guess, for, you know, good, responsible gun owners, guys that like guns because it's a hobby and because it's fun and because it's a friendship thing and something that you can do with your family. Um, you know, I mean, you know, it's, it's something, there's not a whole lot of stuff that somebody that's, you know, uh, a, a sports that you can do when you're six, a six year old and a 80 year old can do together. You know, but shooting is one of those things. I mean, my grandpa and I used to shoot together like crazy, you know. So 
um, it's oh, nice to be out there and saying that kind of stuff because that's the kind of stuff that changes people's minds. I'll add to that that you know, no matter what shape you're in, you know, physically <clears throat> shape, you don't have to be in any physical shape. You can be tiny, huge, or anywhere in between. Thank God. And still be able to shoot just as well as the next person if you, you know, practice and such. Right. Yeah. But see, if you don't have that in your family, and like I said, I mean, there's there's a lot of people I know that, you know, they're in an area that, that is gun friendly or could be, and they've never done it. And they, they don't have any inclination to do it because that's not, you know, they'd rather whatever they do, you know, like they're mowing their lawn or something. And so... Like I said, though, I think I think you know when you watch movies or TV shows that you know push you know just whatever if they're they're you know ideas that people have about them or you know something that's wrong. I don't. I think that that has a lot to do with you know why you know the the, the anti crowd is that way. I mean, you you think about it. You, you got colleges with you know thousands of whatever i i i don't really want to say young adults but you know children whatever <laughs> uh at, at colleges and i would say the majority of them you know they they may never have you know the opportunity of you know wanting to or whatever or having somebody in their family that take took them out or whatever but i don't know you know and that just perpetuates it because you know i'm sure there's a lot of people my age that have no inclination to do a firearm and if they have two kids you know that's two more <laughs> you know i guess that's why it's you know important to no that's dooming everybody to whatever their parents did did you do with your parents <clears throat> did? we wouldn't exist if we oh you know, no we had to depend on what our parents did and things wouldn't develop or change yeah, that's true because i i'm not a hippie so i hear you but uh i definitely have a less uh, different opinion on it. I don't. I, I'm, I'm not of one. I'm not of the position to exclusively require self-defense to be part of our um, defense of firearms or our huh. interest in firearms. We don't live in a deadly society. We live in one of the least violent countries on the planet, and everyone who's everyone wants us to work and live in an even um, safer one. And everyone's moving to do that. And as we get better economy and as we, you know, tackle more and more social issues, there'll be less reason and there'll be less crime. So I don't want to have the justification for our Second Amendment uh, enjoyment or our recreation or our investment or any other things that we have Second Amendment for and ultimately resistance of tyranny because just because we're looking towards the future of getting to, uh, better doesn't mean it can't get worse doesn't mean we can't outside influences affect it but anyway i guess it's so that we don't have to depend on the uh acts of self-defense to justify why they should be interested in firearms that's a no-win situation no one's going to tell you to be a pacifist and and force you into it you can't yeah. you can't assume that someone who is a pacifist someone who would rather literally die than resist lethal force there are people like that, and we live in a country where they have a right to be that way. We don't have to agree with them, and we certainly have to let them live their lives. So if we expect them to change their whole perception of the way humans interact, that's asking a lot. So I suggest that what you ended up with there, or maybe it was uh, Pancake said, um, just the act of recreation, the mm -hmm. interest we might have in investment or in history, the mechanics of it, <clears throat> We know, we, I don't think we personally, I personally don't think that we focus enough on how intrinsic guns and firearms are to our culture, our language, everything. So if we can, I think that if we can bring all those, that well-rounded part of it, bring guns into our culture the same way that automobiles are in our culture, then people will fear guns the same way they fear automobiles, which is not at all. They feel the master of the automobile because even if they don't drive, there's tons of people in New York who don't want a car and don't drive, but they will tell everyone that we have a right to own cars, right? They don't, we don't need to put a gun in their hand. They don't need to feel fear. They don't need to uh, be paranoid to the point where they carry a gun every day. If we carry a gun because we feel it's a, a responsible way to, to, you know, to be, to live, uh, that's like carrying a fire extinguisher, life insurance policy, or a spare tire in the car. Um, 
you know, nobody has to. Some people feel the obligation, the responsibility to do so, but we, I don't want to live in a country where you have to or the people are required to or look down on if they don't. Anyway, that's my two cents. Yeah. I think there's two some int- some videos that I like to watch too when they pop up are, are people shooting for the first time, <clears throat> people that are either anti-gun or, or, you know, indifferent or have never shot a gun or kind of scared or whatever. Um, I watched one one time where uh, one of the people that shot that took the, you know, took the offer up um, to, to do the little video to be one, some, one of the people in the video had bought a gun and never shot it. Um, he bought it. He thought, man, I should have a gun, never shot it, kept it in the box, never took it out of the box. Didn't know what to do with it. Kind of, you know, was like scared of it, you know, and, um, you know, somebody put out, I'm sure some sort of casting call or something to say, Hey, you know, you want to come down here and shoot. And he shot and he, he was like, wow, this is great. I really enjoy this. He's like, I, and that's when it came out that he had it and never shot it. But most people that do those kind of videos, it's funny. They always end up with us. Not always, not all of them. Some people, you know, they're, they're really are scared and they don't like it and it's not for them and it's fine. But most people, when you watch those, they, they come away with a smile on their face. They're like, damn, that was kind of fun. That was interesting, you know. Even if they say, I'm seeing people say, I'll ne- I don't think it's for me, but it was really fun. I, I I could see why people like this. It's you know, and that's that's cool. That's that's what it's all about, you know. Is it's it's a it's interesting and it's it's you know it's a little bit of adrenaline rush for people and you know it's 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 cool. Do you think that ties in with uh, you know the the shooting sports and you know like the what what is the the one with skeet but that uh sport like no the ones that look like they're out and just you're walking around and it's out and is that sporting clays where they shoot them and they roll them across the ground and yeah, oh, oh, clay yeah. stuff yeah where it's, you know it's not like you're just standing there oh now you have to sh- you know shooting at a paper target or something i mean even that is cool but you know that getting out and doing some of that kind of stuff yeah my my range does um uh, wood woods walks they call them where they set up like targets and steel targets and stuff through the woods and it's like a trail that you go down and stuff i've never been able to do it but um, they always do them on like saturday afternoons but um yeah that and and they do um the the fun the novelty targets where you can play like you play battleship you play golf you you bowling or whatever they are and they do that indoors and you know, it's, so what's nice is even if it's raining or whatever, they'll do them during the winter. So it gives people a chance to come and, you know, it's like a social thing. You know, you you go and you got, you know, you meet people and, you know, it's kind of cool. You know, and that's the kind of thing that I think a lot of people that don't aren't into firearms, they would never even think about it as being like a social event. You know, and that's pretty pretty nice. That's pretty cool. You know, you can go there and they have like they set up like some snacks and stuff like that, and you go and you pay per shot or whatever, and then they pay out 50% or whatever. And the other 50% goes to the, the club. Um, you know, it's a fundraiser, but that's something that people would never, ever think <laughs> they're like, Oh really? You know, that's different. And that's a good argument for having electronic ear pro. Oh because yeah. I know absolutely. as a kid, it, it, it was kind of, I don't know. It seemed awkward, especially at, at a, a range where you know you, you couldn't hear, and it was you know a lot of yelling, and obviously you're paying attention and stuff like that. But I know with the, the electronic ear pro, uh, my stepfather he's he's not a you know, he doesn't really care for the range, but you know he has hearing aids and stuff, and so you know being able to take those out and use electronic ear pro so that you can still hear, and then you know, continue on that that's something that's enjoyable to them because before you, know, you put those earmuffs on and it just you know I don't know. a lot more sociable if you can hear everybody, I guess. You know, one of the things you were talking about is fun targets and stuff. One of my favorite things to do when I have anybody over like I did last week and never shot before is just shoot things like pop cans or water bottles, stuff like that, reactive stuff, so they at least get more mm-hmm. than just shooting paper or steel even. I really want to get a, I want to get a dueling tree. I've always wanted to have one. I just don't want to spend the money on it right now. I don't have the money to spend, but that, you know, I've never 
never been able to, to do something like that. You know, when I was a kid, I would have loved that to, you know, me and my other cousins and stuff that shot. I mean, that would, that would have been a blast, but yeah, we used to do balloons, you know, you fill up, fill up water balloons or something and, and we'd, um, tack them to a tree, thumbtack them to trees and stuff, you know, you, you guys that live down there in the desert and the, you know, the, the hot places, it was always cool going out in the winter where it was, you know, pack snow and stuff and shoot paint cans, the aerosol cans. Mm -hmm. you know, so that, you know, you got the painting all, you know, that was always fun. I also like just taking, I took a two by and put on one of my targets and just stapled some uh, clothespins to it and just take, take clay pigeons and stick up there. That works pretty good for reactive target. But I think it's definitely something to look at as far as doing that. You know, to get more people out. Because I offer all the time, and they just look at me like I'm crazy. But I guess that's... Well, I mean, you are crazy. That's normal for me. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Gizzard, no opinion on this? I haven't heard a word. Well, I haven't exactly heard the question. <laughs> Why are you guys so afraid of guns? We did kind of get off on a tangent, but... Why is who afraid of guns? The antis, anti gunners. Why are they afraid of guns? Because they think they're evil? Because they think they cause all the problems in the world? They don't realize that people are the ones that commit the crimes with the guns. The guns don't commit the crimes. But they would like to think, you know, no guns, no crime, which we all know is not true. But, uh, I mean, that's definitely on the surface of it, but like you say, they don't think all cars are responsible for all this. They don't think all hamburgers or milkshakes are responsible for the majority of heart disease in this country. You know, they, they're willing to, to separate things until this one. So I think, well, you may, I don't know if you heard when we were talking at the beginning but I think there's deeper rooted stuff. I really think Ellis is onto something. I think it was Ellis, right, that said that they don't trust themselves, so therefore they project that on others. Nobody else could be responsible, or why would anybody have something like that when you fly off the handle any moment and use it to hurt somebody? Like they really huh. think the way it is, but they own knives, and they don't everybody who owns a knife is running around stabbing people or is right at the brink of stabbing people. Anyway, I think there's something deep, deeper rooted, and then they are willing to, in this case, blame it on the gun. Because I don't think logically they blame, like I say, the car or the swimming pool or the stairs for other things. Well, no, it's kind of... But, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, buddy. What I was going to say was they probably justify that there is good in certain things, like, yes, cars are involved in accidents, but cars are also helpful in getting back and forth. Knives kill people, but knives also help you slice up bread and your favorite steak. And until they've been exposed to what guns, what positive things guns are used for, I mean, most of the time, if you take somebody to the range who's never been around guns and they get a chance to fire one, their resistance to guns most of the time lessens quite a bit once they've been exposed to it and realize it's not something that's just going to blow up and kill people. It's fun. It's, you know, it's an activity that, you know, that everybody can do that's competitive and everything else. It's not just an evil thing you hold in your hand, but until a lot of times until they've been exposed to that, just tell them that. They don't get that sensation, but if they hold one in their hands and actually shoot it, then a lot of that fear goes away. Well, one I, thing that kind of question. Up there. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I I'm, I talk a lot. Go ahead. Uh, no, what what if they see firearms as you know military stuff, right? So if you think of it as a grenade. What what use is a grenade? I mean, is there anything positive about it using a grenade? And if you, you know, they're, they're very dangerous and there's no fun in them, which whatever. I mean, there is fun, but, you know, it, as far as something like that, that they're just, it's so out there as far as, you know, somebody just walk around with a grenade in their pocket. There's really, 
You know, do you think they, they kind of look at guns that same way? Where it's something that's so, ex, you know, extreme to them that they can't imagine? I don't know. Well, what's well, yeah, and that's a, <clears throat> I think sure. that's kind of no, what Jesus is saying, too. It's either for killing people or it's for killing critters. It's for killing what scares me right now is they're not even being anti-gun as much as they were now. Now they're being anti-gun owner. Just look at how they went after the NRA and all that. And, you know, the NRA is just people, just gun, gun owners in general. So now they're decided to give up on the guns and just go after the gun owners and make gun owners look bad any way possible. I don't know. I spent all yesterday with... Uh some family that, that are, are totally extreme opposite of, you know, the, they're, they are the, the anti-gunners and it, it's very awkward. <laughs> so, and I, I would, I would love to have it that it wasn't, I mean, there's situations that are, that are a little different for everybody, of course, but, you know, if we, yeah, that's all I can say about that. Without getting in trouble. We're 30 minutes in, and that's one topic, so we're going to cut it there. But that's sort of the point. When we hit topics that are interesting, grab them and run them on a lobby or on a, your own shows or just a chat at a gun shop or a gun show or work or whatever. That's sort of the point of the show. So we'll move on. And uh, every day we like to feature one of the members over on Gun Channels. Do we have anybody today? No. Nope. So why doesn't uh, Snob come up with somebody to feature today? Uh, have we done Dead Horse in a while? I don't know, but Dead Horse is definitely one of the people we built gun channels for. You can see how much he enjoys it and how, how uh, interested he is in sharing his interests. You, I don't even know if you guys people that are fairly new may not have even experienced Dead Horse's AR-15 projects, multiple, multiple projects, but he's um, now into the reloading. He's helping David with uh, his reloading adventures. He's uh, using a lot of the tools that we have at Gun Channel, so I especially am uh, appreciative of that. He uses the pretty much all the tools that we've got there. He's been around for a while, and he's seen them all, and he uses them you know, when needed, so uh, definitely agree. He answers. Sorry, he, he answers questions, too. He's, he's great to talk to. That's what I was going to say. He's just got a wealth of knowledge and is super helpful if you ask him anything. And if he doesn't know it, he will look it up and tell you. You know, I've heard him do that for multiple people. He's a king of deals. And the king of conspiracy theories. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, he has a lot of fun just farting around, too. So, uh... Looking forward to meeting him when I drive through Utah. Uh, let's see, Bob met up with him, I think. And when he was in Utah, they went to the museum together. I don't know if anybody remembers that show. It was a pretty awesome show. We They were both live at the Browning Museum, and I think Bob was walking around with the camera, and uh, Dead Horse said something like, hey, can you give us a tour? And the person who was watching the museum, there's always like one person there that watches the museum. They were like, sure. And they walked us all around and toured us. We were live during the kind of walkthrough of the thing. It was a great experience. All right, with that, we're going to talk about the state of the state of New Mexico today. Do we have any New Mexicoans in here? Is Night Strike here? I think he's from New Mexico also. He's from everywhere. Right. Pretty he's much like everywhere. Santa Claus. Yep. Uh, I went skiing in Apache, New Mexico. Where I've been to New Mexico. Where's Apache, New Mexico? Up north? It's like right in the middle. Um, we drove across from Camp Pendleton and went skiing. Some some mountain in the middle of there. I couldn't tell you. I, that was Wait, it gets cold enough to ago. snow in New Mexico? Oh, yeah. yeah. We have mountains. We have terrain here. So when you go from, I don't know, it's probably less than 2,000 feet. Maybe it's 2,000 feet at ground level or whatever. Then it'll go up to 9 or 10. You get snow. There's yeah. a lot of ski resorts in northern Beautiful. Mexico. Nice. No, no, other than that. Um, so we don't have anybody from there. Is this psycho saying I was born there? 
Um, anyway, it's a neat state. Uh, honors our CCW, so I carry there all the time. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're a decent state. They're kind of weird. Uh, they're not 100% pro gun all the time, but they're pretty good. They don't have guns in the area, yet. But. It says their shall issue uh, permits open carry without a permit. Um, yeah. It's kind of like Pennsylvania, I guess. That Those two things are like PA. Well, I don't pay a lot of attention to Mexico, but I think they've got pretty <clears> decent gun <throat> laws. I've drove through there and never been worried about it with a gun. And I'd looked before I went, so I'm assuming they did. I don't remember. It's been a long time. And it's the kind of place you'd want a gun. There's wide open areas driving through the middle of nowhere, and there might be a wolf or something or some crazy rabbit raccoon or who knows bad guy um there is Rabbit a jackalope well, there's an international border with mexico and although it's not the same as it is in other states as bad at least it's not as bad as it is in other states they do have juarez right down there and the las cruces so not exactly the you know, potential for issues i guess uh what about um adding a little difference to it is there any uh manufacturers any destinations. I can think of a couple. The NRA has their big range there, the Whittingham range or whatever it's called. Uh, I don't know how to say it. I think it's Whittingham. But uh, they've got a massive facility there. You can see it from space. It's huge. And uh, <coughs> the Brownells, whoever the guy, probably the guy who built Brownells up, he has his collection there. So it's, uh, it's not the biggest collection in the world, but it's a very interesting collection, as you can imagine. And uh, of a museum there as well. Red Dawn shooting locations are in in New Mexico. Film most of the movie there. We were driving around uh, looking at gun shops. Me and Bob back in '16, and I think, and we found uh, there's only gun shop. One gun shop in is that Santa Fe, New Mexico. As you come out of Albuquerque towards the Red Dawn place, uh, you go through Santa Fe. We stopped there to. Oh, I think my headlights went out on the cop car so we had to stop there as driving in the middle of the night my headlights went out so we stopped there for the night and in the morning i woke up looked at google maps and there's one gun shop in town so we're like yeah hey, let's go to that one gun shop and i'm debating i know how far it is to get to red dawn uh to las vegas new mexico where red dawn the, most of the movie was filmed but there's some locations around and one of those locations was where they squirt uh where they at the end of the movie with the hind helicopters and they're she's squirting an orange juice on the dude or squirted an orange on the dude uh, I knew that rock was somewhere else besides, you know, besides where the rest of the film was. And uh, we go to this gun shop and we're chatting with the lady who runs the shop and saying, yeah, we're looking at gun shops. Is it okay to take some pictures? And she says, sure, yeah. We're kind of famous for being on, uh, what's the name of that show about the cop in Wyoming? He carries 1911. I think of it. It's got the chick from Battlestar Galactica in it. I don't know. Oh, come on. The sheriff from Wyoming. Longmire. Longmire, thank you. Uh, they filmed a couple of scenes from Longmire in her gun shop. And we're like, oh, that's awesome. That's really cool. We're checking out the Red Dawn filming location. She goes, oh, really? And she gave us the two of the dot locations to get to that rock. Like, boom. So I'm not going to tell anybody where it is if you want to go. I think it's called Tina's Range uh, in San, uh, what is it called? Santa Fe, New Mexico. And uh, it's a pretty cool little shop. It's actually a big range. Big giant shop, like big machine shop type of building in the middle of nowhere, and uh, just a really big shop, like full size mounts and uh, heads and stuff all over the walls. Cause it's, you know, I got plenty of real estate, so uh, just an impressive place to hang out. She's got two big dogs, balls laying all around, so you can play ball with the dogs and stuff in the place. It's a really a cool place. The only thing I found in New Mexico for farms manufacturers was a CGS group, and they make suppressors, barrels, rifles, all that, and they're located between Roswell and Artesia. Oh, they're in Artesia between Roswell and Carlsbad. Sorry. Oh, okay. Well, they got Roswell, too, so we got the aliens from there. We got this where we get Velcro and, and Tang and microwaves. The internet. <laughs> Touch screens. LEDs. Twinkies, yeah. I don't know if Twinkies existed before aliens, didn't it? I don't know. They just crammed that in there with magic. 
All right, so that was New Mexico, I guess. Uh, if anybody knows anything else about New Mexico, make a video about it and let everybody know. So next we'll move on to Gun Shop of the Day. Every day we uh, do a gun show. We try to feature a gun shop. That's why we call it the Daily Gun Show. Um, so that we have an opportunity to hit as many gun shops as possible. Uh, let's see, we're doing cool surplus store. It's called, a place called Big Sky Surplus in uh, Arizona. It's up in the White Mountains. I've talked about this one a couple of times. I actually have pictures of it this time. So we're uh, efforting towards getting all the pictures of places that we visit up online. And, uh, you know, each time we take the tour, uh, we get better at that. It'll be a little bit different this time. So we had uh, Jimmy helping out and others. But uh, we'll uh, continue to try to show these shops off on the website. What we're also doing there is adding links, right? Links back to the shop and to with their address and stuff. So we help get the name, the, the word out there on the web forum physically, I guess, you know, like as far as the internet's concerned, like we want to have links out there. So uh, it's one of the reasons we do the show or one of the reasons we uh, want to get out and feature shops is so we can help give them some free advertising, give them some of the internet work that they can't necessarily afford to throw into their budget. Anyway, this is a little gun shop in the middle or a little surplus store in the middle of nowhere. I was uh, driving back from the Red Dawn filming locations, I think, out of New Mexico. You go past the very large array, I think, where the movie Contact was filmed. And uh, once you get into Arizona, you're basically at the top of the <coughs> right, where all the pine forests and mountains and shit are, and you, that's where everybody hunts and fishes. So this is a kind of built up area that used to be a little sleepy town, and now it's super fancy and Asian homes for people in Phoenix, I guess. And uh, so there's a lot more stores. <clears throat> so I was looking at the gun shops and kind of impressed with the number of gun shops there on this, I don't know, kind of a ski resort type of ish town, I think is mainly, mainly what it is. But um, I just saw this surplus store and I stopped in and I saw that like mannequin or whatever out front with the gear on. And uh, just a neat store. These pictures are open, there's just a lot of stuff in there. And what was impressive, it was, I mean, they had a fair amount of like stuff you can buy at any. Uh, store like stuff you just might need like a pair of gloves or something new right that you don't necessarily want a whole worn out pair of gloves or a pair of socks or something but as far as just military gear they had legit real surplus and i'm only used to seeing that kind of stuff right next to a base or a fort right like where people are selling off their stuff as they're getting out so uh it was kind of cool to see all this stuff in the middle of nowhere i really wasn't expecting it and uh doesn't do a lot of online stuff he said but um imagine just enough people come up and I'll keep them in business so uh cool shop unexpected that's what it's all about finding these shops when we tour and sort of like that is the fun ones when you just i was actually turning around to go back to another gun shop and saw that place as i was making the u-turn so kind of uh happenstance you guys have any cool gun uh, surplus stores by you <clears throat> yeah we had one uh, there's one up in the town that i grew up in um that does a pretty decent job there used to be one uh, that my grandpa used to take me to when I was a kid. Man, I wish that place was still open. That was awesome. You know, and it was, you know, just more World War II stuff and uh, just bayonets and all sorts of awesome stuff there. I still, that's where I got my bayonet. <laughs> I had a bayonet for a rifle that I didn't buy for 20 years or something, <laughs> you know. Yeah, we got Hubbard's um, here in in my area. They're been around for it seems like forever, but you know, maybe 25 years, 30 years or so. I think I was in school. Well, it might not have been, but they, they're pretty cool. They, they bring in a lot of stuff, and it's, it's you know, that bulk order, you know, wherever the magic site that they get their stuff from, you know, overseas or whatever. And, you know, they've got, you know, uh, you know, our stuff plus, you know, other militaries, which is kind of cool. They have police stuff too, so you know your your utility belts and your, you know the the stuff that comes in black, you know. So I've yeah, only they're... ever been in one military surplus store, and I just stopped at that on the side of the road in a little small town in southeastern Oklahoma, and all they had was like Chinese junk. It wasn't even military surplus, but that's what the name of the store said. But there's a big one in Tulsa, but I've never been there. Yeah, that one that's yellow. Yeah, that one. Did you go to that one, Gary? I don't think so. I think they all went on, I think Saturday morning or Sunday morning. They all went, or was it Friday? I know they all kind of went there one morning to check it out. No. I've drove by it a million times, but never stopped. Went to that shop. I read it there with 
with uh, P Peanut, and we were trying to hit like a number of stores before like 7 p.m. when they were kind of closing at 6 and 7. And this shop was closing like at 6, and we got there at like, or maybe it closed at 5, I forget, but was, we got there like literally like five minutes where they were shutting the door. So I just I asked if it was okay to take a couple pictures. They said sure, and ran through the place, but it was big. A lot of uniforms and uh, like Patriot saying, I call that stuff like for security guards or you know, somebody's going to be a bouncer or something and they just want to have a little bit of intimidation factor. They put on a bunch of ballistic nylon stuff and it, you know, stops it from, <laughs> from starting to fight maybe. And you can find a lot of those on your that site, the, was it the gunshopguide.com? Yeah, I put those gun shops on gunshopguide.com, so it'll be, you know, it's not you, a major in, uh, index or anything or anything. It's just a kind of a running list of the shops that we visit. Uh, as I got time, I play with it a little bit, but it's it's mainly just to physically have links and stuff on there that, you know, when you look at the internet from the underside, if you pick the internet up and flip it over, it's just a bunch of wires going back and forth to each other. You can look at it that way, the links, right? Reciprocal links, the whole web and all that. Um, creating a place that gets attention, that has a certain amount of uh, consistent growth, uh, that's beneficial and these people can't pay for that. So it's what I used to do is pay me to build sites like that. So I just, so it, I'm, what I'm building isn't necessarily for the human beings. We just don't get a lot of traffic, but it's for the for the guts of the internet but um as i have that, time i polish it up so it looks better once in a while and that's important to know because that's that's you know something to say when you're you're getting those pictures and mentioning that the uh, you know that that's what that does oh no i never bring that up so here's a little tip oh. after doing oh, this since 1997 hey, uh, that's great you don't tell people anything more than they need to know or want to care about. So if somebody doesn't give a shit about SEO, you don't bring that up. Say, hey, can I take some pictures of your shop? They say, sure. Or they say no. And then you either do or you don't. But uh, they, yeah, they get all weird when you start talking to them about what you're going to be able to do for them and that kind of thing. And uh, Nobody's interested in hearing that kind of stuff out of nowhere. Maybe if they approached you and asked for counsel on it, then of course, but... No, no, no. Never bring up tech stuff in front of people. No, no, not even what kind of camera you use. And, you know, hey, can I help? Can I take a picture? Yes. That's about it. Hey, see, that's why you run the show. Well, <laughs> thank you. It, yeah, it's all, I think Go said it earlier when they were talking to one of them before chats tonight. Um, but he said earlier, you know, just going in, knowing, like, acting like you know what you're doing because you kind of do. Uh, don't wait for them to figure out what you're doing. Just, get the yes or no and move on. There's other people, other shops, there's other stuff. But anyway, um, what are we gonna do? Gun Rights Policy Conference coming up on the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd of September. I'm just throwing that out there in case anybody happens to uh, be traveling, have an you know, adjustment in the travel patterns and they happen to be anywhere near Chicago. Uh, it's a free event. It's a three-day event technically. The first day is really um, a new part of it, the media, the 2A media summit or conference or something. And uh, that's sort of a new thing. But in the evening, on the first day, Friday, uh, the, gun rights or the gun rights organizations members and the heads of those organizations, many times the founders of those organizations, show up on Friday and kind of shoot the shit. Uh, there's drinks. I don't remember if you pay for drinks or not because I don't drink, but it was certainly like water and coffee for nothing. Um, stuff like chocolates and marshmallows and crap you can put in the coffee. There was cake for like a second before everybody eats it. Uh, stuff like that, like little cheeses and things to eat. And it's all free and you can kind of hang out with the industry. Well, that's the industry. What do you call the people that run the, the gun owners rights organizations? So that's Friday night, a meet and greet. Then on Saturday, everybody gets together in a conference room type setting at a hotel. This will be at a hotel right out front of O'Hare. Um, assuming it'll be sizable. Actually, we looked around inside of it. It actually is going to be sizable. And uh, they'll take the stage one at a time for the whole day. Um, gun owners rights groups, some of the affiliated like organizations, like the doctors or the women or the I don't know, whatever groups will come up, take the stage. This last time they had somebody come up and talk about suicide, which is super interesting because you don't want to think about it. It's, you know, it's gross and disgusting and you, know, you want to not think about it, but think about the number of veterans that are uh, choosing that route and the way that they're using it against us uh, because those numbers, they, they like to lump those kind of situations in with uh, 
firearms statistics as if you know there was some correlation. It was certainly interesting to hear from her. Uh, so anyway, there's different groups that'll take the stage. They, normally, they're giving you a sit rep, what they've been doing, what they got planned, what they might need, what they've got to offer. Uh, people can ask questions, and then the next group will take the stage. There's breaks every once in a while so that it's not super annoying. Uh, it's pretty comfortable. It's usually in a nice hotel. This is a Hyatt or something, so it's, I'm sure it's going to be a nice hotel. Uh, it's, the lunch is nice, and it's catered, so it's free, and everybody's happy. They have vegan options, which is cool. Alan Gottlieb, I believe, is a vegan. Um, so uh, then Saturday night, same kind of thing, meet and greet, hang out with the people that you just talked to. You can't imagine what that is like uh, until you experience it. So I'm encouraging people to think about experiencing it if you're anywhere near Chicago. Sunday, it'll be a much low, lower turnout, unfortunately. I imagine just, you know, people that can sh to do all they can to show up can get there for like one day, right? And then they're gone. Some people just, it wasn't the whatever they expected maybe and they don't show up again. Who knows what, but uh, usually the second day is like a third of the, the turnout. Again, lunch is catered. Uh, more people take on the stage and then everybody says goodbye. While that's happening, the gun owners rights groups owners or whatever you want to call the, the founders and the runners of these things are getting together off stage, getting their um, strategy. You know, they're all getting together in one spot. So they're able to coordinate and strategize and network and, and it's a beneficial thing for us all. And hopefully as more and more media people get involved when it will be able to uh, amplify their messages coherent coherently like you know together like we'll get on step and get on the same page and be able to let people know what's coming and what 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 ways we've got to fight what what challenges we have and what resources we've got available to us um, it, it's a grassroots thing and uh, it's it's amazing so if you have a chance to get there uh, it's on it's in Chicago on the 21st 22nd and 23rd I really oh, hope that in the next year or two I'm able to go to one because I really enjoy listening to Alan Gottlieb speak and stuff. I think he makes a lot of good points and stuff. I'm just not able not to make able it. Make it but the good news is they move it all the time. So like last year was just it was in uh, Dallas. The year before that was Florida, I think. I, yeah, I should have went last year. It was only five hours for me last year. Do you know where it's going to be next year? Have you heard? I mean, I'm trying. Oh, they never tell us until Sunday. Like, we'll get a couple. If you really know who to ask or who to listen to conversations, you can overhear where it's going to be maybe Saturday night. But hmm. I've never known earlier than Sunday. And then I usually wait because I did that this year. I was like, oh, I know when it's going to be. And then I had all my shit wrong because I, I had it the week before because I guess they probably changed it a little bit. But uh, so you probably want to wait till January to get the actual next year's date. At least the date. I'm sure they'll have the city by Sunday, and then the actual date. You know, I'd wait till maybe a little like closer to time in your calendars. Yeah. All right. So that's pretty much a show. We're right on the top of the hour again. Uh, I guess we could talk about gun history if we can get it in here real quick. Cram it in there. What's today? Fourth September. Nine four. Nine four. There's the link to today's day in history. I always like to look at the first one. Mexican provincial governor, some guy founded Los Angeles. Oh shit, the Mexican provincial governor founded Los Angeles today in 1781. You're welcome. Uh, Fulton began operating his steamboat in 1807. So Los Angeles has been there longer than steamboats. The CSS Yankee, Confederate, something at Hickman, Kentucky, fired on the Tyler. That's funny. Well, it wasn't funny for them, but it's funny for us because we know a guy named Yankee. 1941, World War II, a German submarine makes the first attack of the war against a United States warship, the USS Greer. 1882, Thomas Edison displayed the first practical electrical lighting system. He successfully turned on the lights in a one square mile area of New York City, the world's first electricity generating plant, or with the world's first electricity generating plant. So 1882, 100 and some odd years ago. 
88, George Eastman received patent number 388850 for his <coughs> roll film camera and registered his trademark, Kodak. George Eastman introduced the box camera. Nice. 1864, the uh, bread riots took place in Mobile, Alabama. I don't know what that is, but it's the bread riot, so, you know, <laughs> there's some food chat in there. A lot of people were eating bread, and they got the gluten anger. And they <laughs> 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 Hulk hate gluten. 19, 1951, the first live transcontinental television broadcast takes place in San Francisco from the Japanese Peace Treaty Conference. 1957, under orders from the governor of Arkansas, armed National Guardsmen prevent nine African American students from attending the all white Central High School in Little Rock. Oh, yeah, there's iconic pictures of that one, right? Yeah. Yep. Also in 57, Ford Motor Company introduced to the Edsel. I just saw an Edsel. Is it uh, Ohio Flyer? So Ohio 45 is going to pull up to some show. I think I'm the right guy on Instagram. Show that. Oh, that's all. oh, here's an important one. 1972, The Price is Right premieres on CBS. The longest running game show in American history. Er, longest running American game show. We missed a couple from 50. So in 1950 was the first Beetle Bailey cartoon, and then, or at least the first time in syndication. And then 1950 was also the first helicopter rescue of an American pilot behind enemy lines. I'm guessing that's in Korea. But, uh, Matt, okay. 1951, uh, President Truman addressed the nation from the Japanese Peace Treaty Conference in San Francisco in the first live coast to coast television broadcast. The broadcast was carried by 94 stations. Wow. Um, 1942, the Battle of Guadalcanal was going on. My grandpa was there. Oh, yeah. 1989, the Air Force launched its last Titan III rocket, which reportedly carried a reconnaissance satellite. The Titan III before the hundred satellites into space. Probably was replaced by the Titan twos because they just they took them apart by then, and they used them to shoot satellites up for a while. In 1886, after almost 30 years of fighting, the Apache leader Geronimo, with his remaining warriors, surrendered to General Nelson Miles in Arizona. Well, how do we miss that one? What year was that? 1886. Oh yeah. Let's see. Known as the one who yawns, uh, most of them know it by the Spanish nickname Geronimo. Um, Geronimo was kind of a son of a bitch, but he was kind of cool too. Um, yeah, so back behind Geronimo's stronghold, you ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. So it's basically this kind of weird looking mountain that's slopey on the west and the east side, so you can just walk right up at like a big ramp, and then on the west side, it's a big cliff, right? So they go they'll get up to the top of that. Anybody tried to chase them up the ramp side and get wailed on, and nobody in their right mind is going to try climbing up a cliff to attack them. So that's the stronghold. Uh, it's oh, just north of Tombstone. Basically. If you look at a map of Arizona, it's kind of north of Tombstone. We used to tool around out there, just driving around all the time. And uh, there's a place out there where there's dinosaur footprints in the rock. <clears throat> you can go out there and see dinosaur footprints, like the dinosaur walked through some mud one day, and then it's, now it's a rock. And, Nin 1998, Google is founded. Oh, shit. And the rest is history. <coughs> Do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. From <laughs> today. All right, so... Uh, that was some history the idea there, so you can, I don't know, impress your friends with your knowledge of history. So if anybody wants to throw stuff in, one of my other goals is to have something interesting about guns every day over on the calendar. So one of our goals, I don't think we have anything over there today, dude. So um, I think with that, we'll get close to wrapping it up here. Thanks to everybody for joining us. All about the communication. We have quite a few people watching over on the YouTube tonight, chatting along with us. We haven't really been relay and everything, but a lot of, uh, lot of uh, parallel chat to what we've been talking about. A bunch of stuff going on on the Gun Channel side of court as well. That's kind of cool to see. 
Uh, I should probably throw out my link to the Indiegogo I've got going. So if anybody's interested, I'm going to have to shut down the store. I'm going to have to shut down the store while I'm on the road. Um, but I'm also going to use the opportunity since I'm going to be kind of uh, in a shadow as far as the store goes. I'm going to uh, order a bunch of patches for Cyber Monday so that we've got some new stuff for the store. And I'm going to throw the link out. Anybody that's interested, feel free to jump in and grab some, but also share it. These types of projects are all about uh, social network part of it and sharing it. I don't get, I don't go on Facebook almost at all. So I definitely appreciate people sharing this kind of stuff over on the Facebook or over on Twitter. I almost neglect Twitter completely. And uh, that's the kind of stuff that gets this some mileage. So if anybody's interested in just getting a good deal, our goal is to have 10 patches made in this batch, we're calling it. And uh, if you get, we get 10, then you'll get 10 patches for 50 bucks ship. So that's five bucks a patch. Uh, there'll be PBC. We're going to be doing for sure the 762 by 39 spam can. Uh, my first time I did it, I it's in Russian, but it's actually a commercial. It's like a after the Cold War type of spam can. I want to do one that's actual Soviet this time. I'm not going to because I need to do a re rerun of those anyway. Uh, we're going to do a bacon pancakes patch based off of uh, open hot, open face hot dog sandwiches. Uh, picture that he took off by I'm assuming mm -hmm. that he did make, mm -hmm. did make those pancakes and bacon. Yeah. So we did that one night in a chat and we're going to take that and turn it into PVC. Um, I'm going to do Ooh, um, PVC style. It. Nice. Oh yeah. It'll be cool. I'm thinking it'll be neat to layer it, right? Have a piece of bacon laying on top of the other piece of bacon on top of the pancakes. Let's get some yeah. going in there. Um, we're going to do it scratch and sniff. Uh, I can wipe it in something, and you can sniff it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Something. You can wipe I mean, it in something. Sure. We'll put yours in a special baggie. And you can <laughs> uh, but you have to guess. Next send time them all the to dog me. Out, G. No, what you got to do is send them all to me, and then I'll put them all in my pocket and, and work, and then I'll mail them out. Well, that's a very special pancake patch then. Um, <laughs> some well, nice sweaty pancakes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Let me go back to an earlier thing that we have here in the chat that's never going away. <clears throat> Graffiti. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's the patch for next year. <laughs> All this chatter that's going on. This is cool. So somewhere in here, we're going to find a bank pancake fart. Here we go. All of his patches. That's up to you. Bacon pancakes, farting bacon pancakes. So we're uh, going to definitely do the spam can. We're going to do the pan bacon pancakes, the uh, chairs against the wall. So I've been doing a couple of these in a series. So we're going to do one of those in PVC for the first uh, in a series of those going on. Uh, we're going to do the FU media. That's one of the reasons I'm kind of doing this in this way, because I'm not going to be able to sell the FU medias. I don't want to sell them. I'm just going to be using those for free patch Fridays and well, I guess, you know, people who participate in this will get one. But um, that's kind of tough to just throw hundreds of bucks at a patch run that I'm not going to be able to put on the store. So this is a, a kind of a way to get some stuff. There's another secret one that I'm not going to talk about that I won't be able to sell. If we can get to, well, quite a bit more people on board, we'll uh, throw a couple of, well, at least one more, maybe more uh, secret ones that, like I say, won't be able to be for sale, like be copyright infringements kind of stuff. Um, let's see, but we're going to do gun channels, ranger eyes. So a ranger eye is on a helmet. It's the uh, IR reflective little square that you get on the back of a helmet. They've used them since now, and it's a friend-foe identifier. So if you see a bunch of little eyes, you know that you're looking at the back of your own guys, right? Uh, that concept, a little small square patch, is now just called a ranger eye. And it's, uh, you, you've seen them. Angelina has a series of um, flag ranger eyes, the Liberty series. They're one inch by one inch. They've got the Gadsden snake and some of the other uh, flags from the uh, from the uh, revolution and stuff. So um, other people have had. I did a 1.4 C, the little small uh, small arms placard for trucks. I did one of those years ago. It's a one by one patch. So for the fifth year anniversary of Gun Channels, instead of just getting the same old patch in different colors or something, or just a plain old reorder, we're going to make them tiny. So we'll sell them as a set of five or something. Uh, but those will be in the mix and i'd like to do something with our internet press uh, new media type of patch uh, we've always sewn those had a, maybe two or three versions of this already but it'd be cool to see that in pvc and uh, we'll keep going like i say hopefully we'll get some more people on board it's only going to run for nine days 
Uh, we'll design some of the patches in live chats when I get bored on the road, uh, pull over. I may or may not have my live stream back today. I'm supposed to get my strike removed from gun websites today. So uh, assuming I get my live feedback, I'll be able to go on, li uh, go on live and we'll scribble out some of the new patch designs live. Anyway, I'll put the order in right before the rights policy conference. I don't want to be dealing with this after the conference or during the conference. So we'll have everything ready to go. We'll order the patches before the conference. That'll be a few days after the campaign ends. That way, by the time they get built and everything and sent to me, uh, they'll be arriving right when I get back from the trip. So then as soon as I get back from the trip, they'll go out to everybody and we'll have uh, hopefully the leftovers to put up on the store for Cyber Monday. So you're facilitating by throwing 50 bucks in here, you're facilitating us being able to buy more patches and also, well, I, I did ideally, uh, more quantity of certain, certain patches. So that instead of having to do like a run of 50 and paying a little more per patch, maybe I can get 100 and that way there's a little extra and uh, make some money on the store going forward. So again, we appreciate the people that are investing in gear websites this way uh, that are getting some, you'll get some patches that are not able to be bought. If you're not interested or able to participate, we do encourage you to share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter. You never know um, who might be interested in you know, something that we've got there or just to, you know, participate in our projects. All right. With that, I guess you guys have anything that's going on that you want to chat about? I was, <clears throat> we talked about, uh, we were talking about, I said, brought up Guadalcanal. I have a photo album that my aunt made for my grandfather and it has his discharge papers in it. And I always thought it was interesting because his monthly rate of pay when discharged in 1945 was $56.70. A month. That's what he was making when he was in the Marines. Sounds about right. Yeah. And he got five cents a mile to get home from Camp Lejeune to Philly. And 38 bucks for travel. And they spelled his town wrong. The town he's from. <laughs> but he was a Marine. So, I mean, they're not great at spelling, right? <laughs> uh, a lot of times it's like you're walking through a line and you just don't care. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Wrong. Okay. Great. Let's keep going. <laughs> <Wednesday>. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I'm sure, and and I'm sure at that point he was. They were all happy to be alive and going home. So who cared, right? I did post a a thing on the main page of Gun Channels today. Um, something you brought up, Jeev, about you know getting out there and recording and doing doing the videos. And finding the, you know, the old timers that, you know, are old timers and getting their story down from, you know, whatever it is, you know, if it's military, you know, Korea, World War II, Vietnam, you know, any of that kind of stuff or, you know, some old coal miner, who knows. But I posted a couple of links. They've got some, some different colleges that have been doing these veteran projects, trying to find them and recording them. And they're you know, range from 20 minutes to two hours. But some of the, you know, the, the old time, you know, World War II guys, it, it's really interesting because it's, you know, it gets into stuff that you don't see on the, the shows or whatever, but they're on YouTube or whatever. You know, they're easy to find. I just posted one of them. But um, some of the, the colleges up in Connecticut, I believe, I, I started watching and I've got, I don't know, I've, to something if you got time give you some ideas and maybe you <clears throat> should talk to somebody right on yeah, i highly encourage it i've uh i've been i've uh talked about it before in the past a couple of times i've had a chance to sit down with guys um but i i mean if you've got family or just a friend or something somebody at work that's got stories it's worth chatting with them and if they'll let you uh, record uh, what, what I guess what I'm getting at is if you watch something like made for PBS or you watch something made for the History Channel, it's at least going to be PG, and they're probably only going to ask them about it, you know, things that are, I don't know, whatever, family-friendly, let's say. Uh, when you start just chatting with somebody, uh, somebody that you're you know, friends with, let's say, or that's comfortable with you, you'll start hearing about all the interesting stuff that happened in day-to-day -day life and the nitty-gritty and the blood and gore and the loves and losses and that kind of stuff. So um, these guys have really interesting stories. It's not always uh, appropriate for all audiences, but I think there's still something to 
uh, recording that stuff. Because sometimes, you know, you can have an R-rated interview with somebody or you can have an X-rated interview with somebody, not because of the sex necessarily, but because of the real life. When these guys start talking sometimes, it's graphic. But there's some yeah. Shit. Yeah. But it's it's important because you know your kids and and grandkids they need to know that stuff. You know, it's, it's, and that's what I was just gonna say. I I never not taught. It's filtered like, oh, the Nazis couldn't have been that bad. Like, come on, let's talk to grandpa. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, my my aunt is <clears throat> my aunt's kind of our family historian. She's real good at that stuff. She she's um, she's the one. That, like, I'm looking through this little photo album now. I have it sitting here. Um, She's the one that did that for me. Um, and I've talked to her a lot the last couple of years, and I never really talked to my grandpa about stuff. Um, and I was with him more than I was with anybody else. And you know, when I was a kid, we were so tight. But it's not something that I felt comfortable talking to him about. Um, so, you know, I su I've suggested on my show a bunch of times, like, you know, talk to people about it if they're willing to talk to it or, or ask family members questions about it because they might know a lot of stuff that, you know, they might have, uh, you know, got out of them. And it's a part of history. And it's a part of your family history that you don't want to go away and you don't want to lose it. You know, it's it's good, bad or indifferent. It's very, very important. And as a kid, you don't think it's important. So you kind of let it pass you by. And then you get older and you, you wish you would have, you wish you would have talked or you wish you would have learned, you know, uh, I wish I, I wish I would have had more history from my grandfather as far as his life. Um, you know, so you look back on it and sometimes you miss out. So it's a shame. And we live in the world with a phone <clears throat> so much, both video and audio that, uh, you can record stuff that again, you can, you can, you don't know who's going to be interested in it in the future. So, yeah, it's something that you don't have to then, well, I remember him telling me about it. I think he said it was this, and he might have said this, and, oh, I think he did say that. We're recording. It's none of that. You know exactly what he said. Yeah, yeah my, my cousin sat down with too. Yeah. Yeah, my cousin sat down with my grandpa once when he was real little and, and talked a little bit, but um, <clears throat> not not nearly what it would have it could have been if we really would have focused on it. You know, it, it should have been more, should have been better. Yeah. And I'll just throw this on there. Once you've had a conversation with somebody and recorded a piece of it, you can then, that's, a, that's now you've started somewhere. Now you can say, hey, can we re-record this story or can we record that story and not tell us about having to reach through your friend's guts to pull that grenade out or something. You know, can we talk about what happened before that. How did everybody get onto the aircraft carrier? You know, something, you, you've got something to start from and, and maybe make it a, a thing. Like you can get one throw in every couple of weeks and have that discussion and maybe you give that guy something to do. Yeah, it's something good for them too. Yeah. Well, it's not, it's not all, right, yeah, it's not all bad stuff either. You know, you hear funny stories and you hear, you know, uh, the, how they got in trouble. My, my grandpa was a troublemaker. He got in trouble. He he was a sergeant for like, I don't know, two weeks, and then he got drunk and stole a Jeep, and the MPs got him. They locked him up, and he was that was it. He was back to private, you know? You hear funny yeah. stories. So. <laughs> and you heard Hans is saying that, that people like don't want to talk about it. And there's definitely, I, mean, I definitely know people that, family that won't talk about certain things. They don't want us to have it in our brains. I mean, there's certain things that are horrible that don't need to be repeated, but stories mm -hmm. like that, it's the funny stuff, uh, the chicken, yeah. man, uh, the funny food they ate when I, you know, something from training, like those kind of stories can be super valuable. They don't have to be just the, the stuff mm -hmm. that them or the stuff that they don't, that brings a flashback. We don't want our, what do you see? Yeah. yeah I, I had a friend that was, was, uh, <clears throat> or somebody I knew, that was, you know, in, in Vietnam and stuff. And as far as talking to the family, nobody heard anything about it. You know, it just wasn't anything talked about. But it was something that, you know, had been mentioned to me. You know, and I, I don't, you know, know why, whatever. But, you know, it was, so you might have a chance that somebody else might not. You know, even if, you know, I mean, I would push it. But I don't know. It was just an idea. So. Sounds good. So... Anything else? No, well, I was just going to ask. That's, that's, I was just going to add. That's one thing I wish I would have done. My stepdad's uncle was a World War II 
fighter pilot ace and he had actually holds the record for the most kills in world war ii as a fighter pilot and i got to meet him once and i was probably in sixth or seventh grade then and wish i hadn't you know been old enough to realize to listen to the stories he was telling that night and remember him now well that's the thing i could think back you know if i would have had a, a phone <clears throat> savvy enough to click a button uh you know to record stuff yeah, there's there's things that I probably vaguely remember even having the conversation, and you know I probably if I could have picture or photographic memory, you know, yeah. which I need to just go back and ask my stepdad about it because you know he was older then and remembers a lot, and I met him multiple times throughout his life and heard the stories multiple times. I just met the man one time. All right, anybody else got anything they got going on? Snob, you got your live streaming. Yeah, I'm going to do one uh, Saturday, and I am now able to embed it on YouTube, or on gun channels. So what, what was the necessity in order to embed? I had to sign up for the partner program. Even though I'm not eligible for monetization, I had to sign up and be approved for the partner program, however that works. Even though I don't have a 1,000 subs and all that, I just did it just like I did, and it. I seen today it sent me a little notification on YouTube that it was approved, so... So we just need to get knives to know that. So when his shows go up, they go live also. Or you can... I guess. So that's cool. So look forward to your shows. That's on Saturday. <clears throat> yep, Saturday at eight o'clock, the real time, Central. Yeah. Hey, you got any videos coming? Uh, I I might take a day or two off. <laughs> I I'm I'm kind of scheming some new things. You know, you mentioned some of the being more descriptive. And so I, I kind of did that with the, the shotgun video and stuff. And so I'm, I'm revisiting some other things and I, hopefully I can get out to the range too. Um, but yeah, I'm always trying to, trying to keep moving forward. So. I thought Patriot was going to try to catch up to Travis's years of, you know, videos in one year. So Patriot P11. Yeah. Uh, I could be called worse and I have. <laughs> Travis Patriot Eleven. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> no, Interesting. No, no. Huh? You can't be a Travis. Don't do that. And my first live live show was with with the the other Pancake mm. Travis. So. Interesting, huh? Which is a Travis P. Mm. Travis mm. Pancake. Oh. What? And now he's on every live show there is. Oh, I thought you said on live show and there's Patriot. I thought you said yeah. Travis T. Because it was a Travis T. Yeah, there is a Travis oh, yeah. T. He's out there. Somewhere. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of jealous. Patriot has never been on one of my shows. I've never been asked. You know, normally I, I people say, Hey, I'm gonna send you a link. And then I say, Hey, okay. You know, I'm I'm easy. I mean, I have to throw this out there, Ellis. <laughs> Patriot has been on every one of my shows, so you know. Just throw that out there. <laughs> Fancy pants. Well yeah, that's uh, you know, that's because you're you're more popular than me. <laughs> yeah. All right. With that, anybody got a quote? I got I a quote. quote. Oh, Ooh, shit. I beat you. Yeah, Mine's a right, short one. Mine's a short one. <clears throat> okay, good. So I'll, I'll just spit it out and then you can do yours. So okay. I don't know it? if it's the best. What is this from? Chaos going on here. We got one. <laughs> and Kate can save this for some other day. <laughs> oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You can both do Mine kind of ties in. The last time. <laughs> Somebody read a quote. <laughs> it's it's by Art Bookwell. It's I don't know if it's the worst of times or the best of times. I just know it's the only time you got. See, that's funny. His 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 is a guy named Bookwell, and mine's from Noah Webster, the the Webster's Dictionary guy. <clears throat> Noah Webster said, "Before a standing army can rule, the people must be disarmed, as they are in almost every kingdom of Europe." The supreme power of America cannot enforce unjust laws by the sword because the whole body of the people are armed and constitute a force superior and superior to any band of regular troops that can be on any pretense raised in the United States. Noah Webster. The guys and gals of gunwebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thanks for watching gunwebsites.com.